peak invisibles. Invisibles at peak. Invisible, like nobody even sees you when it comes time to choose sides to the big game. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, honored guests. For many years, I ran a continuation school for at risk teens who sometimes made themselves visible in unusual ways like with drugs, or pregnancy, or violence, or spray paint. And then there was Alfonso, who simply dropped out of the regular high school and came over to my school to make himself invisible. At enrollment, he sat in a chair in front of me, slouched down, staring at his feet the whole time. Yet, from the few words he spoke, I could tell there was a pretty bright boy in there. One thing broke through his cloak of invisibility. Basketball. He played every lunch hour. But even on the court, he hid himself. He was tall and slender. Never called for the ball. Never made eye contact with his fellow players. Just quietly slipped into an open spot. When I played with him, I made sure he got the ball because it was like dropping a quarter in an automatic machine. He catch it, look over his shoulders, turn, and leap, shooting a perfect Kobe Bryant fadeaway jump shot. Wish. Two things about my school. <clears throat> First, no excuses for being late. If you were late to my school, you reported to me the next day with your parents to explain why. Second, every senior was required to do a meaningful service project and then present that project to a panel of adults from the community at the end of the year. No exceptions. <coughs> so I heard that Alfonso had a good project. I was excited. I was sitting with my panel in the school district central office. Came time for Alfonso to show up. Wasn't there. 10 minutes later, still not there. So I was explaining to my panel, apologizing to them, saying, Alfonso has lost his right to graduation. Just as Alfonso came through the door wearing a suit with a friend of his helping him carry in a large dresser. For the first time ever, Alfonso made eye contact with me. Peak, he said. I know I'm late and I don't graduate, but I want to get my project anyway. Okay. And he looked down at his feet and I thought, oh boy, here we go. Then he raised his head. My dad and I, we made this dresser for my grandma. My grandma, she asked me to make her a dresser. But see, I know why. Because see, my grandma knew that my dad and I, we never talked to each other. In fact, I rarely saw my dad. He drives truck for his trucking company. And when you come home, he'd grab a can of beer and some food and go right to the garage 
where you had this wood stuff. No exits. So I asked my dad, Dad, will you help me make a dresser for Grandma? To my shock, he said, yes. We spent many nights, many nights, very late at night, working on the wood, talking about it, talking about all sorts of things. Him showing me how to use the tools. He even showed me how he did this fancy design on the front of the drawers. But he said, I wasn't quite ready for that. Three days ago, my dad was driving his truck on the freeway, got out to change the tire, and a car hit him and killed him. My dad, he did these three drawers. But I did that because, see, I watched my dad very carefully, everything he did, and I listened to every word, every word he told me. And I learned. And I did that one. And that's my project. I'm late because I just got here from my father's funeral. I can't think of anybody who made themselves more visible to me than Alfonso did in that moment. I could only muster two words. Congratulations, graduate. Have you ever felt invisible? See, I believe that some of us are here in this room today because we felt invisible. And now we raise our heads Tell our story like Alfonso. Mr. Cohen.